We love sharks, all their majesty, brilliance, and raw power. And despite, or maybe because, of our love and fascination for these creatures, we've learned to respect them and their ocean homes. We people are pretty content to live our lives on land and take the occasional plunge into the sea, understanding that we are sharing it with a plethora of toothy creatures. The most well known being the shark, a creature who has been with man since the beginning, probably owing to our shared preference for the lovely blue waters of our seas. Sharks have an uncanny ability to both terrify and inspire those who come across the sea. Well, that's what we like to think. We can avoid these ancient carnivores as long as we aren't in the ocean, right? Are we safe in our lakes and rivers? In comes our most well-known exception, the bull shark, which has been found far up rivers such as the mighty Mississippi and the Amazon. This bull shark was caught near Alton, Illinois in 1937. Another was found in St. Louis, Missouri in 1995. Luckily, it seems to be a rare occasion in the United States offering a sigh of relief to some rivergoers who can get over the fact that they might be sharing a swimming hole with one of the most aggressive sharks in the ocean. But what if I told you it's not alone? If we head east to northern Australia, we find that there are actually a plethora of shark species that travel upriver, which is probably not good news to some of you watching. One of the rare species of the river shark is Glyphus glyphus, or the spear-toothed shark, found in the coastal waters and rivers of northern Australia. They aren't huge compared to other sharks, only growing to 1.8 meters or so, so you'll have other things to worry about if you want to go for a swim in a North Australian river. Another species of our river sharks is the Ganges shark. It was initially known only from a few specimens collected in the 19th century in the rivers and coasts of India and Bangladesh. They, like our Glyphus friends, are hard to find due to their preference for turbid rivers and wetland habitat. They inhabit the Ganges River and surrounding coastal waters and wetlands, which is one of the most polluted and human-impacted river systems in the world, contributing to the decrease in their numbers and rarity. The only recent specimen found was in 2001, and was only identified by photos of its jaw. The turbid nature of these rivers has caused them to adapt special features compared to their Aussie cousins. Their eyes are placed on top of their head instead of on the side or the front of the head, and this is thought to help them swim along the bottom of their muddy river habitats and use the sun as a backlight to spot prey in the river above. And last but not least, we return to the land down under where we find the Northern River Shark. They have been found in 12 river systems in the Northern Territory in Western Australia, as well as a couple of river deltas in Papua New Guinea. These sharks are among the most well-studied glyphus species, most likely because they are the most abundant. So addressing the earlier question, are we safe in our lakes and rivers? Yes. All the species here described today won't be opposing any threats to you at your local swimming spot. While some, such as the bull shark and the Ganges shark, are known or suspected to have hurt people, their low densities make it extremely unlikely for you to even come in contact with them in fresh water. So, you are probably better off worrying about your sunburn than these lovely and increasingly rare species. Ski, thanks for watching.